Electric vehicles represent one of the most advanced technologies to combat global warming. Transportation makes up about a quarter of global carbon emissions, and consumer vehicles are about 9% of that. But to reach net zero impact, the energy intensive process of mining and processing battery minerals has to clean up its act too. One way to chip away at that problem is to mine less or reuse or recycle EV batteries instead. How do we take these batteries that have been produced, whether it's in a cell phone or a car, and recover as much of those materials as we possibly can? Nickel, cobalt, lithium, manganese, aluminum, and copper, these minerals can be reused thousands and thousands of times. There's a lot of effort, time, energy, and money that's required to extract these materials out of the ground. The last thing we want to do is put them back in the ground and have to dig them up again 10 years from now. But recycling batteries comes with its own unique set of challenges. First, there have to be enough old batteries in need of recycling. Electric vehicle sales in the U.S. are looking wobbly, so it could take longer than expected for recyclers to gain scale and become profitable. Then there's the actual collection and transportation of batteries. Each battery is packed with energy, so moving them around while they're in various stages of degradation creates a safety hurdle both companies and public officials are working to solve. So how are recyclers navigating the bumpy road toward a sustainable EV future? This is how a battery is recycled. Some batteries come in in pallets like this, boxes and boxes and boxes of batteries. Some come in drums. The EV battery packs, they come in pallets. Every type of battery, shape, size, chemistry, we get all that. Serba Solutions is one of a handful of startups trying to build a battery recycling industry in the U.S. It's not exactly a brand new company. It started out as a family-owned waste collection business 30 years ago. And then more recently, in 2021, it strung together a few acquisitions to form the battery recycling company it is today. As we come down our facility through the center aisle, we do a small format battery recycling sorting, whether that is gonna be a retailer, a municipality, or something from a corporate at your business if you recycle your batteries at work. So that's one aspect of it. The other is obviously electric vehicles. And you look at the gigafactories that are being built in North America, they're gonna produce a lot of scrap material that needs to be collected and the materials need to be recovered from those. But then also the electric vehicles coming off the roads. So this is an EV battery pack. This is the steel structure of the battery. These devices here, that's actually the lithium ion battery cells. He'll take these modules and put these modules here on a pallet. These modules then will send them to Lancaster, Ohio, where we'll process the batteries, turn that into something called the black mass, and then eventually extract the lithium, nickel, cobalt, and manganese out of the battery. So we'll recover 95% of the metals that are in this battery and then purify them again and send them back to a cathode producer to make a new cathode that goes into a new battery. While EVs catching fire have captured the public's attention, a study carried out by the Highway Loss Data Institute found that EVs are no more fire prone than gas powered cars. The caveat there is the data set is still small because there aren't as many EVs on the road yet. But fire experts say storing and transporting batteries on a ship, a truck, or in a recycling center is much more dangerous because having hundreds of batteries close together creates the opportunity for a fire to spread if one cell fails. While the industry has identified best practices, there's no uniform enforceable standard yet that recycling companies have to adhere to. It's kind of up to them. So there's a, a design of a package that is being used by one OEM where their battery sits in that pack. There's a case that goes over the top of it and then they ship them that way in, a, in the back of a trailer. There's other devices where they totally enclose the battery pack. So every OEM has a little bit different type of packaging design and, and we work with them on different requirements to have to help build their packaging. Typically batteries that are in drums are either defective, damaged, or recalled. And we put them in drums because we want to make sure that if there's a thermal event because they've been damaged, that it's contained. And typically they're packaged with a material in there called vermiculite, which if there is some sort of thermal event, the material around that will just basically melt around the battery and, and extinguish whatever's in there. I'm about to sign the Inflation Reduction Act in the law, one of the most significant laws in our history. It's a manufacturing renaissance act. This is the most incredible thing that we've seen in the United States for a very long time. When we look back at that, that act uh, 30 years from now, 
we're going to see it as a pivotal piece of legislation for climate. Sustainability is one incentive. The other is geopolitical. China dominates the transition to electric, with its battery makers supplying some 80% of cells worldwide. Now, U.S. policymakers on both sides of the political aisle are taking steps to decrease dependence on Asia's largest economy. The Inflation Reduction Act has been a, a game changer for, for the United States. It definitely has catalyzed the investment in the North American landscape. Obviously, China's got a probably a 10-year head start on a lot of us. But now you have the U.S., which has created these incentives now for manufacturers and for companies to build out these assets in North America and ensure that we do have a, a sustainable supply chain, something that we can domestically source these materials and domestically build batteries for our transportation system and for our vehicles. And then if you layer on the recycling aspect, all we're doing is continuing to reduce that dependence of where we have to source those materials. So if we have the materials in country now and they're driving around on roads, we have the opportunity to be able to collect those materials and reuse them over and over again. It's too early to tell whether electric vehicles will result in a net loss of automotive jobs, but there's no question they are bringing huge disruptive change one that is feeding workers anxiety and becoming a hot button issue in 2024's presidential election. If we continue to electrify the transportation fleet, there's gonna be a need for our business and a need for jobs to be able to produce these critical minerals. There's a limited supply of them in the earth and there's a limited supply that's out there that we need to make sure that we recover. 